Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Tomorrow is Memorial Day here in the USA, and that is the holiday. It comes the last Monday of May. It's the holiday that ushers in the beginning of the summer season for backyard barbecues and picnics. Although here in Southern California, my neighbors fired up their barbecues weeks ago. Um, one of the things that I like to make for, if I'm invited to a, a barbecue or a picnic and it brings something to share is I like to make my finger licking chicken. This is kind of based upon the ideas around the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipes. There's a big long backstory that goes with that. I won't go into the whole thing, but supposedly Colonel Sanders used 11 herbs and spices when he originally came up with his recipe for the coning. And at some point he sold the chain of restaurants. Somebody else bought it even later on. And somewhere along the line, some manager or owner decided to get rid of the 11 herbs and spices because they were too expensive. And so the, someone paid $5,000 to have a, a sample of the coating tested in a laboratory and only four ingredients were found, flour, salt, pepper, and monosodium glutamate. Meanwhile, way back when, there was some guy, I forget his name, he worked for J.P. Morgan and he was supposedly really good at reverse engineering recipes. And he came up with what he thought were the original 11 herbs and spices. I tried his mix. I found that some of the flavors predominated too much, so I balanced them a little bit better for my tastes, and then I came up with my coating mix for my finger licking chicken. I store it in a big plastic container like this. It's always in the cupboard whenever I want to make chicken, I just reach into the cupboard and grab it. So I make a lot of it and just store it. And I keep on a label right here on the box exactly what I use to make my coating mix. So I'm just going to read this to you so you have an exact recording of what I use to make my coating mix. All right, four cups all-purpose flour, one teaspoon ground oregano, one teaspoon chili powder, one teaspoon ground sage, one teaspoon dried basil ground. Now, I don't think that comes ground in the spice rack in the store, usually it's leaf oregano. So what I do when I, with these spices is, if they don't come ground, I have a, a coffee mill for grinding coffee beans, a separate one that I have set aside for doing herbs. So I'll buy dried basil leaves and then I'll grind them myself in the coffee mill. So again, one teaspoon dried basil ground, one teaspoon dried marjoram ground. I also grind that myself and two teaspoons of pepper, two tablespoons salt, two tablespoons paprika, one teaspoon onion powder, one teaspoon garlic powder, and one tablespoon MSG or monosodium glutamate. It's usually sold in the store as accent. Some people have a problem with monosodium glutamate, MSG, just leave it out, don't use it. I don't have a problem with it. I can eat tomatoes, I can eat mushrooms. Those are all naturally high in glutamates. They don't bother me. So I use monosodium glutamate. Again, if you have a problem with MSG, leave it out. Add a little bit more salt if you want and you should be fine. So that's how I make my coating mix. Let me get into next how I prepare my chicken for making my finger licking chicken. For my fried chicken, I like to use boneless dark meat because I happen to really like dark meat. So I usually buy the whole chicken thighs at the warehouse store because they're only 99 cents a pound. Sometimes I'll buy whole chickens and fillet off the meat that I want. I have on my website a PDF and a video on how to debone chicken. Just going to trim this up a little bit. And then after the skin comes off, cut down to the bone and start working around the bone. Cut this bone out. You need a really sharp knife for this. I keep my knives very sharp. I also have a video on YouTube on how to sharpen knives. And then whenever you remove the bone from a thigh, there's always a piece of the joint that stays 
attached. Trim that off. Now, if you look at the chicken thigh, there's kind of a high side and a low side. There's usually a ball of fat in the low side. You can remove that if you want. I'm, I don't care for this one, but on this side, if you pull the, the flesh back a little bit and expose this area right here, there's a long tendon that goes through the meat right there. There's the tendon. It's that string. I get rid of that when I'm making my finger licking chicken because imagine yourself at a picnic You've got a section of boneless chicken, you bite into it, and as you pull the chicken away, the string pulls out and lands on your chin. I think it's gross, so I always pull that out just because I know it'll make eating the chicken a lot better afterwards, a lot easier. And then the last step I do is I usually cut this in half, so I have two pieces that will be then, be, then be coated and fried for my boneless finger licking chicken. I deboned eight chicken thighs for this demonstration. If I'm invited to a large picnic, sometimes I'll do a couple dozen of them and then I get a whole skillet, get two skillets going on my stove. To start my mix for the coating, I'll break an egg into a bowl, pour in a little bit of milk. This is my New Zealand milk bottle that I brought back from a trip to New Zealand many, many years ago. Add some salt and then just mix that all up as you would making any kind of a wet and dry coating. Oops. And then place my coating mix in a broad flat bowl. And these then become my two bowls for coating my chicken before I fry them. I have quite a bit of oil, maybe two cups heating in an old skillet. I'm using an older skillet because I'm going to be using metal tongs and I don't want to have to worry about scratching the surface. So for this I use my old skillet. Got my chicken here. I dip it in the dry ingredients first because that'll make it, give it some tooth, they say. So that it'll hold more egg when it goes in. And pat that well. Shake off the excess and then place that in the skillet. And these get sauteed or fried rather about, I don't know, five to eight minutes per side until I'm pretty sure they're cooked all the way through. Try not to overcrowd the pan with these pieces because they'll suck up the heat and your temperature will go down too low. I try to keep my oil at around 350 degrees, between 350 and 375. I don't want it to get so hot that it starts to smoke. You can check it with a digital thermometer if you want. I kind of know by how quickly the chicken browns. If it starts to brown too quickly, I know to turn the temperature down. I'm running right now at about medium temperature. This is just starting to brown. That should be fine. And then I have set on the side here a couple of plates with paper towels in them, several layers of paper towels to absorb the oil as I move this cooked chicken over to these paper towel lined plates. I'm just coming up on the end of my frying time here. So the next step is to arrange these onto a platter and then see how they taste. And there is a nice full platter of my finger licking chicken. The only thing left to do is to see how good it tastes. Okay, let's see what we got here. Mmm. It's moist. It's got a nice flavorful coating on it. Very good. If you wanted a little bit spicy hot, you could add some hot pepper, 
to this. Ah, that is very, very good. I am going to go eat some chicken. Oh, yeah, that's good. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the homepage or in the recipe archive.